so how does the central bank control inflation? For that, we first need to understand what an interest rate is. And an interest rate is not complex. It's just the price of borrowing money. So let's think about a simple example. I'm borrowing 100 euros from you, and in a year, I need to give you 105 euros back. So what is the cost of borrowing money? Well, the cost is the difference. It's the 5 euros, right? Or 5%, because 5 divided by 100 is 5%. Right? So the interest rate is nothing else than the price of money. And if I have a higher interest rate, I need to pay more money in order to borrow money. So a higher interest rate would be I borrow 100 euros from you and I need to repay 110 euros to you in a year. So that would be an interest rate of 10%. Okay. And here's how interest rates are set in the money system. So in, in every money system in, in the world, we have a central bank. This could be the European Central Bank or the Fed. We have commercial banks. This could be a bank like HSBC or Goldman and Sachs um, or Wells Fargo. And of course, there is you, the consumer. And the, the, the commercial banks, they can borrow money at the central bank. And the central bank can set interest rates at whatever they want. Usually they said interest rate, they can set whatever they want, like sometimes at 2%, sometimes at 5%, whatever they want. And then the commercial banks uh, get money from the central bank at this rate. And then you can get money from the commercial bank. And of course, the rate at which you can borrow money from the commercial bank reflects the rate that the commercial bank has to pay to the central bank. So usually the commercial bank will take a bit more interest rate in order to make money. So it might be between 3% or 6%, right? So you see the central bank controls the interest rate that is happening in the market. So let's look at our example from the last video again. In our last video, we looked at an economy where there are 100 apples. And let's just say that the central bank sets the interest rate at 2%. And at 2%, well, people will get credits, right? Because 2% is a relatively low price. And maybe you say, okay, I want to buy, buy a PlayStation today. I, I need to, I can borrow 100 euros and only need to pay back 102 euros in a year. So that's a good deal for me. So I will apply for a credit and some other people will as well. And let's just say that the demand for credit and therefore the demand, the, the amount of money in the economy is 100 euros. So what will happen to the price of the apple? Well, one apple will be one euro again, right? Let's, uh, you can take a look at the last video. So let's just say that once again, our crazy Russian dictator says, all right, I'm gonna destroy half of the apples in the economy. And what happens is the central bank can react. And let's say the central bank sets the interest rate to 10%. What happens now is that you, you wanted to, borrow, to get a credit for the PlayStation. Now you say, well, that's quite expensive, right? I can borrow 100 euros today, but I need to pay back 110 euros. So I actually won't get the credit. And similar to you, the other people may think the same, but there may also be people who have a very, very important thing they wanna buy, so they will still demand money. So in the end, our aggregate money demand will be lower than at the interest rate of 2% right? Because people have to pay more for money and therefore less people will do it. So maybe our aggregate demand is 50 euros. So what is now the price for an apple? We have 50 apples and 50 euros in the economy. So one apple once again costs one euro. So you see that by controlling the interest rate and therefore controlling the money in the economy, our central bank actually could avoid inflation.